Hey everyone, welcome back to the How to Write a Book podcast. I'm your host, Maciel Valenzuela Castaneda, and it is a wonderful day, wonderful day in May. May Day? Anyone listen to May Day Parade? Oh my gosh, I love it. In case you listen to the same music that I do, we totally booked our cruise for the Emo's Not Dead cruise. It's going to be really awesome. I'm very excited to do that again. Um, and for anyone who listens to Emo music, you know what I'm talking about. I love it. Well, anyways... If you are like me, we are now reaching kind of like this quarter turn of the year. I think you know what I'm talking about, right? It's when spring starts to change, right? And you can kind of sense that summer's coming. And either your allergies are telling you about what this is, or maybe you have kids that are inside the school system. And so that's also kind of a flag that, you know, they're starting to wind down. Um, and that means summer's coming. So what does that mean for us, it means that it's probably time to revisit goals, right? It's time to take stock of what's ahead of you, as well as kind of the mid-year. You know, the mid-year comes, um, you know, it's in June, and you kind of feel this, like, hmm, I'm halfway through. Am I reaching my goals? Am I on track? Um, and also reassessment. I don't know about you all, but I have been in this interesting phase of reassessment. Um, there have been goals that I have achieved that now feel different than what I originally thought. And so there's a lot of reassessment going on in my life, but I feel like, and I think I have to trust in that it is for the better. So if you're feeling like that too, then I hope that you are also maybe praying or communicating with the universe. You know, I pray um, and it's about like kind of my relationship with spirituality and the creator. Um, and, you know, I've kind of mentioned this in the show that I'm spiritual and then you know, I'm kind of like, wait, whatever you feel like is going to bring you to your best self, then, you know, go do that um, so that we can feel empowered and not alone. And also to remember that, you know, we have a message in our hearts for a reason, right? For a reason, something is telling us that we have that message. Anyways, all of that to say is because at the end of this month, I will have my next book published, which is How to Dictate Your Book. I have written this book, I think, twice before. Um, and then this time, I actually really applied everything that I've learned, not just from my clients, but from my interviews on the show and made this book into something that has reached a whole different level. This is so much more what I wanted it to be. I didn't want just anecdotes and then just, you know, kind of, here's what I'm feeling. Here's what you can feel too. I wanted real science behind this, real research behind this, because that's what I enjoy. That's what I love to see. I love to see those connections. So um, it's the end of this month and May. I hope you all enjoy it. And now let's dive into a little bit about our amazing, amazing guest. Um, Michelle is going to be amazing. I just thought her entire, not just career, what she does for a living, but what she provides for people, for authors is so cool. Just in a nutshell, she is dominating the podcasting world. You know, she's like, here's, you're going to make a podcast. And this is how you can turn it into a business. And she helps people get onto podcasts and shows. And, and um, she has so much good information about why authors should leverage that. And I talk about, it. I ask her, I ask the hard questions for you guys. You know, I'm like, okay, but we're authors, we're introverts. Now, what do we do? I ask those kind of questions because I want to know, you know, and she has some great advice, some great information. And if you're here, you're listening, you know, you kind of have that affinity for podcasting as well. And let's dive in so you can see how it's going to help you and your work. All right, everyone, let's dive in. Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. <laughs> and welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, Michelle Glow. Glogovac. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you. Good morning. I'm so good. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I'm great. I'm actually, I'm so stoked that we're from like the same area. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. where are you calling from? San Jose, California, Love Silicon it. Valley, you know, all the, all the names that we have for this area. 
<laughs> yes, excellent. What the uh, the mixing pot? I think we used to call it. You know, there's a lot. Or the melting pot. Yeah, melting mm-hmm. pot. Yeah, steam cooker, yeah. pressure cooker, <laughs> something like that. You know, it makes sense. So um, I was super happy to have you here. Um, we were just chatting about that. You have um, a law degree, and masters. You do podcasting. You have um, this book, How to Get on Podcasts. Michelle, before we even dive into any of that, please introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself. Oh, thank you. Uh, so I am Michelle Glogovac. I am the podcast matchmaker. I'm the host of the My Simplified Life podcast, and I am the CEO and founder of the MLG Collective, a boutique podcast PR agency where we pitch authors, entrepreneurs, experts to podcasts to share their stories. We, we don't go in with the intention to sell a product, book, or service. We go in to educate, inspire, and motivate podcast listeners. And then I help clients repurpose all of their podcast interviews as a way to thank their host, as well as a way to build their brand. Um, oh, and I am the author of How to Get on Podcasts. That, that's the newest title that I hold, and I'm still not used to saying it. I love it. Oh, my gosh. You have um, a, just a, such an extensive background. I love it. And I saw your book, and I was like, of course, we're going to talk about writing. We're going to talk about podcasting. <laughs> This is beautiful. Um, so I, I'm just super curious. Before we even get to the book, I'm super curious how you even got here. You know, um, podcasting is new in many ways, but also kind of old in many ways, kind of like the radio broadcasting. How, what was your journey like to get into podcasting? So podcasting didn't exist when I was in college. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't an option. So I like to remind my children that, you know, you don't have to pick something because it might not even exist when you graduate. And so 20, 30 years from then, who knows what there is out there. So my whole intention since I was five years old was to become an attorney. I carried a briefcase to kindergarten and my major in college was law. And when I got out, I actually, actually, while I was in, I needed a part-time job and I didn't have a car so I could walk to the airport. So I started out as a customer service rep at an FBO, which is the fixed-based operation for uh, corporate jets to fly in to get their fuel, to do all of their arrangements, catering, hotel, rental cars, all of that. So I was then put on salary and got benefits when I graduated college and thought, okay, I don't have to go home, so I will just stay here. And 18 years later, I was still selling jet fuel to corporate flight departments, Uh, married by then, had two kids, and then I was laid off. And at that point, I looked at these two little human beings and thought, okay, selling jet fuel is not making the world a better place for them. What can I do where I'm not traveling? where I feel like I'm making an impact on the world and I can stay at home with them, not have a nanny or, you know, do any of those things. And a friend from my birthing class said, there's a business and life coach who's starting a podcast. And I think you would really love hearing it. I go, how do you listen? I don't, I don't know how to listen to one. This is in 2018. I discovered that the purple button on my phone was Apple podcast, <laughs> iTunes back then. And so I started listening about how we all have a purpose and a passion. And I was just on this journey of like, yeah, I got to figure out what this is. And she ended up reaching out to me, the host and said, you obviously like what I'm putting out there because you keep sharing it. Do you want to pitch me to be on podcasts? And I went, okay, yeah, I didn't know this was a thing. And I dove headfirst in, learned everything that goes into how to create a podcast, how to produce one. But I fell in love with the pitching part. So I went all in on pitching clients and, you know, really honing in on their stories and and figuring all of that out. And so that's how I ended up in the podcasting industry. That's amazing. That's amazing. So you kind of like you followed a passion and that passion led you through this windy maze. And you're like, oh, my gosh, here I am. I'm loving this. <laughs> yeah. who I, I wouldn't have thought six years ago that I would be here, you know, with, with a podcast of my own, pitching people to podcasts and having a book about podcasts. So that it, so it's cool. pretty cool. I love that. I, mean, I love how you said, like, um, you're telling your kids, like, you don't have to pick something out of college because I mean, it's so much pressure. It's like. You know, this is yeah. where you're going to be for the rest of your life. And, and, and oh my gosh, so many, it's just, it kind of trips you up. I totally, I love that you're doing that, you know? I, I'm trying to tell my, my, uh, cousin, she's like 18 years old and she's been asking me, and I'm, this is like my third, fourth career or something by now. And, um, I'm like, that's yeah, okay. She doesn't believe me. And I'm like, it's okay. Just take your time. You'll figure it out. She's like, no, no, I have to figure it out right now. 
<laughs> it's uh, so tough when you're younger. Yeah. I do I do appreciate that I had the corporate career experience. I don't think I need to stay for 18 years to get the full experience, <laughs> but you know, I think it's good because you can then take what you've learned corporate wise and apply it when you're owning your own business and, and that sort of a thing. So dabble around. It's okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I spent like five years in, in Silicon Valley, five, six years. And I was like, okay, this is good. All right, cool. Moving on. <laughs> right. um, uh, I love this. All right. So now you found your passion and you've created this company. You've created this company for, I did. Uh, it's amazing. Can you tell us, you, you said something that was interesting, repurposing content. So you get your clients onto podcasts, mm-hmm. but then how do they repurpose content? They don't just stop when the recording stops. We pull transcripts for them. So we send them transcripts. We also go through the transcript and identify at least three quotes that they said that we feel are worthy of creating social media content out of. And then I also have a full guide that I created for them of here's all of the different platforms that you can utilize. Here's what kind of graphic you need to put up there. Here are ideas. And so they get an entire big guide cheat sheet on how to make the most out of every single interview so that it's not just a one and done, that they can put a blog post up, they can go pin it on Pinterest because they've now got the graphics and they've put that on there, you know, to create, I create a Spotify playlist for every client. So they can utilize that in every email that they have, every media kit, we we include that too, but they can also put it on their LinkedIn page. So teaching them all these different ways to put themselves out there without making it feel slimy, salesy is really what my my goal is. And the entire book, How to Get on Podcasts, is compared to a dinner party. And when the host invites you to their show, it's the same as being invited to someone's home and how you show up that way. Do you bring a gift, a freebie? Do you show up and communicate? Is your phone in airplane mode or are you texting somebody while you're at this dinner party? You shouldn't be, just as you shouldn't be answering an email while you're in the middle of an interview. And then, you know, how do you thank the host? Are you sending them a handwritten thank you card the next day after you've, you know, enjoyed this meal? Did you send pictures? And the same goes for repurposing the content. You're tagging the host. You're thanking them. You're letting people know about their show. And that's a way for you to thank them. So I I love dinner parties. So that that was my easy comparison. (laughs) I love that. That is so cool. And and the reason I'm also really excited is not just because we're podcast people. Because <laughs> I accidentally fell in love with podcasting. I didn't know I was going to like it so much. Um, but because it's such an interesting platform. So I want to ask you how you started writing your book. Uh, but my question before that is, what does podcasting offer that other platforms can offer, like blog writing, um, uh, let's see, I, I'm blanking on what else you can do. There's a lot of other marketing tactics you can do, but what does podcasting offer? Well, I love, first of all, that podcasts are a place where you can be entertained, you can be inspired, you can be educated, you can get your mind off of anything, you can find someone who is going through or has gone through exactly what you are going through right now, whether you're grieving someone, you're starting a business, you're a mom for the first time, somebody has shared their story And so you have somebody that you can listen to. And the beauty of it is that you get to eavesdrop in on a conversation that is intimate between two people. And I I love this because I always say I get myself in trouble. I'm a big eavesdropper. Like if we are having dinner at a restaurant, you can bet that I'm listening to your conversation and I'm going to tell my husband all about it. Uh, So I feel like a podcast allows you to do that. And it's actually okay. It's not, oh, you're a stalker (laughs) type of thing. So you, you get to hear what somebody else has gone through without, you know, searching them out. It's literally just right here. And they're going to share with you, hopefully, all of the steps that they've taken to get through whatever it is, their journey, and they're sharing this story. And I, I just feel like it's such an intimate, wonderful gift that we're giving each other by doing this, that that's what makes it stand out. You know, reading words on a blog is great, just like reading a book. Like, I am the biggest book lover. But when you can hear the author speak on something else, then you hear the author reading you the story. So I feel like that's that's much cooler than, you know, just reading a blog. Now now you have that voice in your head. Like when I uh, I read Marie Forleo's Everything's Figure Outable, and after listening to Marie so many times, you can hear her actually say the words in in her own voice as she's if you're reading it to her without an audiobook. 
So I think that's, you know, the unique part about podcasts and that they're free and accessible for everyone. And thanks to Apple Podcasts and hopefully all other hosts, we've got transcripts as well. So it makes them truly accessible by everyone. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I find the same thing, and especially going back to the eavesdropping. I love the conversations that people can have. You know, it feels like you're having this intimate knowledge with them. You can ask them questions that, you know, you wouldn't be able to ask like in a panel, um, you know, a large setting like that. So, so true. Now, let's pivot to your book, How to Get on Podcasts. So where did this idea come from? You know, what was the moment that you're like, all right, this is a business now. This is the book. I, I, totally separate. Um, <laughs> I love books in general. I work with a lot of authors on podcast book tours and I was interviewing actually a book coach on my show and said, well, I want to write a book. And she goes, well, on what? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to write a book. And she said, well, your first book has to be on what you know and what you're known for. And I went, oh, well, that's my job. Like, I'll just write about what I do and how to do it. And immediately the chapter outlines came out and I, like that was it. I'm OK. Here's what I'm going to write, how I'm going to write it. And I hired a book coach. Um, I adored her. She goes, we'll work together for six months and I am very cheap. I go, no, we're not. We're going to work together for three months and we're going to pound this out and you're going to give me deadlines and I will meet them all. Like, we're going to speed this up. And so within three months, I had written the first two chapters in the full book proposal and then started querying agents and kept writing along the way and landed an agent who then pitched me and landed McGraw-Hill. So that nice. all happened. Like, by the time it was done, publishing took less than a year uh, because the, their business department shut down. So <laughs> it was a unique situation, but they pushed it out very quickly. So that that is how it all came about. Now, the next book, we I don't know. I think it's going to be a novel. <laughs> I love that. Now, you're always welcome to shout out uh, your book coaches, your writing sources on here as well. So if you, she said that she was amazing. Yes, Gretel Hackinson. She's actually, oh. she just moved here too. So she's a Bay Area resident now as well. <laughs> we love got to it. meet for the first time at my launch party. Oh, that's so cool. Where was she before that? Uh, Colorado. Oh, that's a little bit of a distance. Yeah, a yeah. A hop skip there. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Okay, everyone out there, now you have an additional resource for a book coach. I love it. So you decide, I'm going to get this thing out of here, not six months, three months. Now, were there any emotional hiccups? You start writing any imposter syndrome, something like that? You know, well, not funny, but in the middle of it, I actually had a pulmonary embolism. I had blood clots in my lungs, so I had to pause, and I, that was really frustrating. Uh, for, like, over a month, I stopped writing because I was hospitalized for a week. I came home. I was in oxygen. I couldn't do anything, and so there was this part where – I had to stop and I'm not one who likes to pause anything. I'm always like, go, go, go get this things obviously. Cause I'm like three months, not six. Mm -hmm. And yet I was forced to stop. Uh, and then yeah, imposter syndrome as the book comes out, I'm like, people are going to read this. Like you're, you're going to spend your money on it. Um, okay. Thank you. It's still very weird. My husband just finished reading it literally two nights ago and he's reading it next to me. And I, I was so nervous that he was going to say something like, what were you thinking? Or what is this? Or because you don't know it's, it's, you know, it is a part of you. It, it's how I do my job. And yet in the book, I also share, you know, of myself personally and what I've been through to get to where I am or what I've done with clients. And yeah, there's definitely imposter syndrome. There's, you know, the worry of it, is it, is it good enough? Is it worth $30 that somebody's going to pay? You know, yeah, it, it's definitely there. I think no matter what. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and I love that you're bringing this up. So it's there, right? And how are you kind of dealing with those thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you kind of, you know, just have a different mantra as somebody cheerleading you through that? Because they're still prevalent, which is important. It's important that they're still there. I have a great therapist. Oh, <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> yes, I, I have a therapist. I believe in therapy wholeheartedly. Um, and she, she has pushed me all along the way with, you know, here's your homework every, I think I go like every two months now. Uh, but she, she was there throughout the entire process of, okay, where are we? What, what's on your mind? What are you thinking? Um, and, and, you know, just pushing through that of, you know, I, I've dealt with stuff like childhood trauma type of things and how that shows up in where I am today. And, you know, how do I navigate all of those things? So, yeah, it's been a deep dive into myself to get past all of this, but then to also celebrate the, the wins, because that's something that I also recognize that I'm not good at. Like I had a book come out I'm like, great. Next day. Now what? <laughs> I love that. It's it's very relatable for myself, you know. I I'm the same way. It's like, okay, what's the next thing? Let's let's do the next thing. Let's do multiple things at the same time, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I love therapy as well. So, and people on the show, they know that I'm like, okay, if you need a therapist, true, do try to go get a, a therapist because it's amazing. It's awesome. Um, and I wanted to touch back. You said that you, you know, got hit with this medical issue. So you had to pause. How did you get like the gumption to get back? Cause usually something like that, it, it kind of puts those brakes on and it's hard to jump back into something. What did you do to restart yourself? For me, it was that wake up moment of like, okay, I don't know how long any of us have, you know, I, it was right after my 41st birthday, literally two days after I turned 41, I was in the hospital and then you go, okay, what am I doing with my life? You know, what needs to get pushed aside because it's just not worth it. Like sitting on the PTA board. Is that worth it? For me, it wasn't. (laughs) I'd rather put my efforts toward doing something else. And so getting this book out there was worth it to me. So it was in looking, okay, what do I want to prioritize in my life and push forward and focus on those things? So this was definitely one of them because this book wasn't out there. And I wanted to be the first one to get it out there and to have it traditionally published. It was a big deal for me. It was... The, I think the topic, I could see people's, the, the look on their face when I would tell them what my book was about. And then when I mentioned McGraw Hill's publishing it, oh, so you're <laughs> serious. It wasn't like a, you just wrote this and you're going to put this out there. It was, okay, you have somebody who backs you and believes in you. And so that was a, a big push for me to continue and to, to get through it. Very cool. Yeah, I, I even I had that reaction as well. I was like, oh, cool. Like you have McGraw Hill. That's awesome. Uh, oh, so I love that. So um, now let's kind of push forward. So you have your book coach. Um, I would love to know a little bit about what like that process was like. What were they helping you more through like the writing, the accountability? Was it the editing phase? What did that look like? It was really the the great part was that she wasn't totally familiar with podcasting and what goes into a podcast and pitching. So she was able to read what I was writing from that perspective of can you understand it and apply it, Uh, which was awesome because the first chapter was literally the hardest chapter for me to write because it was figuring out how do I sit down with a client and create their speaking topics. Mm -hmm. And it's something that naturally comes to me. And so for me to get out of my own way and think, okay, what questions do I ask? What can you ask yourself to create these topics? That was the hardest part. So it was great to have someone else who was, you know, an outsider to this industry, look at it and go, okay, this makes sense. Okay, this does not make sense. You have to be more clear on this. Uh, so it was working on that part because that was the hardest and then helping me figure out what is the format for a proposal. You know, what what book comps are we looking at? What kind of marketing is there? And, and really that whole process of what do you do? What needs to be included? Uh, that was what she helped me on the most. And we, we had deadlines every two weeks, which was great because I, I hit them all usually earlier than expected because that's how I roll. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that process because um, a lot of book coaches, they have just a variety of how they will help with clients. So that's really helpful, I think, for the audience because it kind of gives them ideas to how flexible 
a book coach can be, especially for what you're searching for. And, you know, you had a very specific goal, three months. I love yes. that. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, Very. I'm not paying you more. You are worth every dime, but. <laughs> yeah, this is what I got, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I need, I have a business to run and I, I you know, I, I need to, to do this the right way. So. Yeah. It's the same in like, in when you're, you're publishing a book, you know, um, what's your budget? What can you do for the cover design? What can you do for getting an editor? Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of, did you go through an editing process? Did you have feedback, uh, beta readers, things like that? I did not have beta readers. And like I mentioned earlier, McGraw-Hill's business department shut down uh, December 31st. My book came out January 19th. Oh, wow. So they started to lay people off in June, and my editor who bought the book was laid off in June. Oh, no. Two weeks later, my agent quit to go work for another publisher. <laughs> so it was, it was like... I was on an island of one, it felt like. Um, oh, no. Once they both left, everything was via email. I never had another Zoom. My copy editor was the most amazing one, and we've kept in touch, but she was also laid off in in December. So, it, yeah, it was very much like the the editing part, really what you see is exactly what I wrote. It, it It's only like grammatical things that were changed, but the entire content of the book didn't get changed. There was there like that process didn't happen. That <laughs> reminds me. That's awesome. I love that. I mean, it sounds like you know, and the cartoons where somebody's like like the car is trying to race and the parts are falling off, and then <laughs> yeah. you barely get to the finish line. Yeah, but you still won the race. That's yeah. important. <laughs> I got across the finish line yeah. all by myself. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was it was it's sad. You know, all these people are gone now. Um, but I, I was I was lucky that they pushed the book to to fruition and that it it did come out. It, the the pub date changed five times, so it, yeah, it, it was difficult because you know I I'm a planner, so I had like my marketing plan of okay I'm going to do a hundred tips um, up to the the launch day, and they changed it, and I went well that's less than a hundred days away. Now what? Um, there go the hundred tips. So it, it turned out. And then I went for fifty tips, and then it changed again. So I have sixty-seven tips <laughs> that led up to the launch of my book. Being flexible, especially <laughs> in this age, it's important. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Um, so, what are some of the most common questions that people ask about podcasting and about your book? Do you feel like there's some common themes that people bring up when they they hear about this work? They're amazed at how much homework goes into it. <laughs> I've had messages from people who said, one woman goes, I didn't know it was such a heavy read. Like, I didn't know I was going to have to actually do work. I'm not sure if she thought buying the book meant that you just get on a podcast, but <laughs> <laughs> there's work associated with it. This isn't just, you know, this is why people aren't all, and why everybody's not just on a podcast. This is why a host doesn't say yes to every single pitch. So, you know, really doing the work. But I think one of the most surprising things, especially for authors, this is what I get the most from authors, is that they think they have to pitch the book. And I get a lot of pitches from publicists at publishing houses pitching the book. And I remind everyone that an, a host is not interviewing the book. We're interviewing the person. Yeah. So pitch the person and you don't have to talk about the book. Mm-hmm. You are a person with a story, with a journey, with knowledge that you can share. So pitch those things, fi- figure out who your ideal audience is, who is it that's going to read your book and then find those podcasts. And what can you talk about to those people specifically? Mm-hmm. I love finding out what it is in a novel that it's that's true about the author. I, I like the secrets. <laughs> I'm one of those. Yeah, I'm an eavesdropper, right? So I'm like, hey, what is what is it about you that's in your book that we don't know? Right. And getting to know the author because we don't get to know the author as a person, as a human being, uh, especially if it's a novel versus a nonfiction book. So share of yourself so we can get to know you, fall in love with you, and then we get to fall in love with your book later on. But that's been the most surprising for authors is to say, oh, I didn't know that I could speak on so many things. I didn't know that I could pitch myself on so many different things. Mm-hmm. And and so it's it's a, a light, light bulb moment. Mm-hmm. I, I love that, especially because that's what I see on, on this side, right, of the microphone is people pitching. And, and, and you're right. It's that. 
of the personality that I'm like, oh, I would love to talk with you about like your insights and what you came across. How cool. So 100% love that. And you, you mentioned um, authors are asking you about podcasting. So do you have like customers or people who are authors that you're serving? Yes, I do a podcast book tour. So it is, it's like a, almost like a speed dating type of thing where we're pitching up to the launch. Usually they're, they're clients who have not yet launched their book, but I do have clients who have launched their book even years ago. They've launched it and we're coming back and kind of reviving of let's see, you know, what else you can get out there or do you have another book coming out? And so we'll, we'll work together on those. But within three to four months, we pitch to podcasts and get them on at least 15 shows. Nice. And I, I also create the media kit. So a normal media kit is just a one pager for anyone. But for authors, I create what I call the author media kit that is six pages long. It includes the blurbs. It includes the synopsis of the book, all of the book facts, um, all of those other additional types of things, plus the one page that has the bio, the headshot, the topics and, and their previous features, too. That's amazing. Now, um, I have two questions that I feel like other people are going to be asking this. <laughs> so the first question is, how is a podcast or how is podcasting going on a podcast beneficial for an author specifically? We get to know you. And you know, I, I, authors are some of my favorite people in the world. And I feel that we don't recognize them on the street. You know, how often is it that you're walking down the street and you're like, Oh, you wrote that book. No, but you know, if a celebrity is walking down the street and I've met plenty of them, I lived in Los Angeles and Brentwood for a while and there's Christian Slater coming to Starbucks and he's like, good morning. I'm like, Oh my God, it's Christian Slater. You recognize him. But I was in New York in January and someone came up to me in a hotel lobby and she goes, hi, good morning. Oh, it's so cold outside. Had no idea. It was Angela Brown. Olivia Strauss is running out of time. And I felt like a total idiot because I just downloaded her book two nights before. Oh, wow. And yet here she is in front of me. And I'm like, you know, this is why I do what I do, because we don't recognize you right in person, especially as we're reading on Kindles and, you know, our eBooks. You don't see that that author photo. So that's why it's so important that we get to know you as a person, we get to hear from you in, you know, they are your own words in your book, but to hear your voice and to get to know just the person, the human being that's behind all of these words that we are totally enraptured by, you know, I'd love to just be reading a book. I love talking to you right now, but yeah, I've got some great books that are sitting here waiting for me too. So it's a gift that authors are giving us by allowing us to get to know them. And I think also for authors, you know, a lot of authors are introverts and, you know, I don't want to be on the stage. Oh, you know, yes, a book signing is great, but that means there's going to be 50 people there and I got to talk to all of them. You can literally talk to thousands of people via a podcast by just talking to one person. So it's very beneficial in that sense. You don't have to pay for all the airfare, the hotels, the rental cars to travel around and do a bunch of book signings because you can literally show up in your own home for 30 minutes to an hour, have a conversation and reach a ton more people than a book signing potentially could. Love that. Yeah. And, and book signings, I mean, exactly. So I'm, I've um, recently gone into the marketing side of my business and book signings can be great. You know, that's what we typically think, but you're so right. They have kind of little return compared to podcasting. Amazing. And then you hit on a second topic, which is the introverts, right? The introverted side of authorship, which is that tends to be um, a lot of the common traits among writers. Right. right. Amazing. And when, when writers come to you, um, what are the, what, what's like their question? Are they like, am I talking about me? Am I talking about my book? What do I, what do I say when I talk about myself? You know? Yeah, that, that's the main question. So I, the onboarding process is an hour one on one Zoom with me where I ask you all of these questions. Where have you been? What have you done? What are you known for? Um, there's a, a Google form that they fill out before that starts, but I go and I, I Google them too. I stalk them. This is why I love my job. Like I'm creepy. You guys know <laughs> you can edit that part. No. I love uh, it. I, I, I get to know you. <laughs> yes. Yes. I see. This is why podcasts are great. You get to know the true Michelle. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I go dive deep into what is out there already about you. And do you even know what's out on the internet about you? Let's talk about it. And sometimes the onboarding becomes 
therapy sessions, like I have had clients cry because they're telling me so much of their story and they didn't realize it, that, you know, this affected them or this brought them to this point in their life of why they are here and doing what they're doing. And then we discuss, you know, are you comfortable sharing that? You know, do you want to share this and let people know about this? Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, but it's also another light bulb moment of, okay, so there is more that I can share of myself that I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. Wow. That sounds so cool because I think you are, and for everyone who's listening, you are solving problems for writers because they're introverted. It's hard for them to get in front of people and places and hard for them to talk about themselves because in a lot of ways that's why they write is because they're kind of like well let me talk about myself I don't want to do that but let me talk about myself through other people right. you know yep. amazing that's so cool I could totally see why I'd be crying too I'd be like this <laughs> one time you know this is why I'm here <laughs> oh I love that so um I would love to do, circle back to your book um which it sounds like it has so much amazing information I love that there's homework in it you know I'm oh I could eat up homework all the time I'm like give me assignments let's do this I want a pluses all across the board so what was the most proudest part of your book maybe the part that you're like you have to read this section or you have to look at this part for your work Oh, that's tough because I, my favorites are actually the dedication and the acknowledgments. <laughs> oh, I love that. Why is that? <laughs> they made me cry. <laughs> it was, Honest. I, I kept them both a secret from my husband and kids. I've got two little ones. They're now nine and eight, but I didn't tell them any part of who it was dedicated to, what the acknowledgments were. And then when the books arrived, I read them out loud as we unboxed. And my nine-year-old son was just a bucket of tears it went and my husband caught it all on video <laughs> oh my so mean and yet I'm like yay you cried that means mommy did good <laughs> so those are my favorite parts um <laughs> but um I think that really that the first chapter because it is it's the hardest it is the one where you go the most deep and as I recorded the audiobook it was funny the engineer said he goes oh this is like I want to get out and do something with my life. Like it's motivating and inspiring. And I had no idea. I had a mom at school come up to me and say, it's like a life coach experience. Like you are telling us what to do with our lives. So there's something else in there that I didn't quite know that I was writing, uh, that it's not just simply how to pitch yourself, but really how to get to know yourself, accept yourself, and then share of yourself. Wow. Well, if anybody had any doubts about <laughs> signing up for your program, getting this book. I think that cleared that cleared everything. It's like, okay, everyone, <laughs> you need this. You need this in your life, not just as a writer, but as a person. Get your butt out there. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. And I think that's so that's so amazing that your son was crying. That's what writers yeah. do. We want to pe like pull those tears out. That's yeah. what we wanted to. With a nonfiction book. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a memoir. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I love that. Well, we are um, getting closer to the end of our time. Uh, but before we dive into where we can find you, I would love to know what's like a motivational tip or something that you always carry with you for our audience here. Oh, you know, there, there's there's a couple like one, I would say it's OK to I get this from Emma Isaacs, who is the CEO of Business Chicks in Australia, to sit on your hands. You don't have to volunteer for everything. And I think that that comes in very handy, especially as you're writing a book that you get distracted. I know I do. Of What else is there to do? Oh, what can I do? Oh, you need help with this? Let me do that. But it's OK to sit on your hands. It's OK to say no and to protect those boundaries. So I would I would say that. And then I would also also say that you need to share your story and what you know and what you've been through with others because you then have that opportunity to change someone's life who's listening and needs to know that they're not alone, that they have there's hope for whatever they're going through, whether it is something like starting a business, writing a book, being a parent for the first time. Somebody else has been through it, and if you can change one single life by being on a podcast and sharing your story, then, you know, what, what better thing is there to do in your life? 
Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And so that's something we want to just really strike here on, on the strike or like prop up on the podcast, which is like, you can reach one person. Amazing. You've done fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Change one life in your lifetime. Like not everybody can say that. Yeah. And a podcast gives you the opportunity to change more than one life. So do it. I love that. Thank you so much, Michelle. So now where can everyone find you and find your work? You can find my my website is the MLGcollective.com. My personal website is MichelleGlogovac.com. And then, of course, the podcast, My Simplified Life, the book, How to Get on Podcasts. And I'm on all of the social media platforms. Um, I'm most active on Instagram at Michelle Glogovac. Amazing. Amazing. Well, this has been fantastic. I'm looking forward to when you write your novel. In that case, come back. We would love <laughs> Definitely. To hear that. Thank you. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, and from the How to Write a Book podcast, this has been especially special. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the How to Write a Book podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the conversation. If you want to keep up with me and my work, check out the website, blackheartedstudios.com. That's www.blackheartedstudios.com. And follow me on Instagram, at Maciel Writes. That's at M-A-S-S-I-E-L Writes. As a book coach and publisher, I'm passionate about helping aspiring authors bring their stories to life. So if you've been dreaming of writing a book and don't know where to start, head to my website and let's chat. You get a free 30 minutes on me. Thanks again for listening and don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.